Rachel Riley. I'm a TV presenter and mega maths fan. And since I was teeny tiny, I used to love number puzzles and number games. I studied maths at university and now I use numbers every day in my job. So I'm taking part in these very important breakfast clubs or VIB clubs with Amazon and Magic Breakfast to teach a very special math lesson which will help you spot some of the information that numbers give away about themselves just by looking at them. Mathematicians have lots of names for different groups of numbers. For example, odd numbers, even numbers, integers, which are whole numbers, and one of the most important groups of numbers used in maths are prime numbers. A prime number is a whole number which can only be divided exactly by two different numbers, one and itself. Those two numbers, or indeed any number that divides another, leaving no remainder, are called factors. And prime numbers have no other numbers or factors that can divide into them to give a whole number answer. The reason that prime numbers are so important is because they're the building blocks of every other number. Every single whole number you could possibly think of is either a prime number or it's made up of a unique combination of prime numbers times together. It's thanks to prime numbers that we're able to do our shopping online to do our banking and send our emails. Prime number encryption relies on the fact that it's incredibly difficult, even for the most powerful supercomputers that exist in the world today, to find the prime numbers of incredibly large numbers, when those factors themselves are very, very large prime numbers too. But when you're looking at smaller numbers, they often give away clues as to what their prime factors are just by looking at them. For example, can you think of a way just by looking at a number to tell if it has two as a factor? Or can you think of a word that describes all the numbers that have two as a factor? Or in other words, all the numbers which are divisible by two? We mentioned them earlier. They are even numbers. And if I look at my selection of numbers from everyday life, you can see eight is an even number, ten, two, 14 and 26 and if you look at these all you have to do is look at the last digit any number that ends in a zero a two a four a six or an eight is an even number and has two as a factor which means you can divide it by two to get a whole number answer and two is a prime number because the only whole numbers that divide into two are one and itself two so now we can look at any number in the world and know that if it's an even number greater than two, then it can't be a prime number as it will automatically have more than two factors. Now, can you think of a way to just look at a number and know instantly whether it's divisible by the number five? Well, if you look at the numbers in the five times table, we have five, 10, 15, 20, 25, and so on. Mm, you might have spotted it. You might already know this already. Just like with the number two, all you need to do is look at the last digit, and if the last digit is a five or a zero, then that has five as a factor. Any other digit, then it doesn't. And is five a prime number? Well, the only numbers that divide into five are one and five. So five is another prime number. The last number I want to focus on today is the number three. How can you tell if a number of any length is divisible by three? without having to actually check by doing the division. Well, math is all about pattern spotting, so let's write down some of the numbers that I know are in the three times table and see if we can spot any patterns. We have three, six, nine, 12, 21, 24, 72, 78, 99. Spot any patterns there? If we look at the end digits, mm, nothing jumps out, but if we add the digits up, of the two digit numbers, so 1 plus 2 gives us 3, 2 plus 1 gives us 3, 2 plus 4 gives us 6, 7 plus 2, 9, 7 plus 8, 15, and lastly 9 plus 9, 18. And then here again we have two digit numbers, let's add those together, 1 plus 5, 6, 1 plus 8, 9. Now do you see any patterns? If you look, when we add the digits up and get to one digit, we have three, six, nine, three, three, six, nine, six, 
and 9. We can see that when we add the digits of any number which has 3 as a factor, if you keep adding those digits until you're left with just one digit, if that digit turns out to be a 3, a 6 or a 9, then the first number is divisible by 3. Let's look at some numbers that aren't divisible by 3. For example, 17, 82, 97. If we add these digits up, we get 8, 10, 16. We add these again, 1 plus 0, 1. 1 plus 6, 7. 8, 1 and 7 are the single digits we're left with. None of those are in the 3 times table, so we know that these numbers do not have 3 as a factor. And is 3 a prime? Well, the only numbers that you can divide 3 by are 1 and itself 3, so 3 is also a prime. And we found 3 primes out of the first 5 counting numbers already. As 4 is an even number greater than 2, we know already that as well as having the factors 1 and 4, it also has 2 as a factor. Therefore, 4 is not a prime number, which leaves just 1 which has one lonely factor of one, but as the definition of a prime number says they need exactly two factors, one cannot be a prime number. And you can't use one as a building block for anything because one times anything just gives itself. I use factors every single day in my job, so I can't help it that when I see numbers written down as I'm walking around day to day, I have to factorise them in my head. And doing this kind of maths is like training in sport. The more practice you do, the quicker and stronger you get at it. So now we know how to spot factors, let's have a try. One place you might see numbers on your way to school is on the bus. I don't know if any of you get the number 75 bus to school, but let's try and find the prime factors of 75. First, let's see if 2 is a factor. How do we check? Look at the last digit. Is it even? No, it is not. So 2 is not a factor. How about 3? How do we work that out again? Add its digits. 7 plus 5 is 12. Two digits. Add them again. 1 plus 2 is 3. Is 3 in the 3 times table? Of course it is. So 3 is a factor of 75, which means that 3 times something equals 75. To find out what that something is, we can divide 75 by 3, and that gives us 25, so 3 times 25 is 75. Is 25 a prime number? Can we divide it by 3? Let's check. Add the digits. 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 in the 3 times table? No, it's not. So 3 is not a factor. But if we look at the last digit again, we can see it's a 5. So we know that 5 is a factor of 25. And you might recognise 25 is 5 times 5. So the prime factorisation of 75 is 3 times 5 times 5 equals 75. I'm going to give you five numbers and using addition, subtraction, multiplication and division you have to make a big number of my choosing. So let me choose the numbers 6, 8, 2, 3 and 7 and I'm going to choose the large number 42. So I want you to use all of those tips that I've just taught you to work out this number. If you find a way, then keep going. I'm going to draw myself a picture of a cat eating a birthday cake while you have a think. Yeah, it's not the best drawing, but I hope you're getting some factors out of there. Ah, uh, just gonna have some cake. Keep going. If you found one way, find another way. Oh, it's making me hungry, this. Mm. What else does he need? Probably a couple more legs. One leg. And another one. Did you find a way? Let's look for its factors. We can see 42 ends in a 2, it's even, so 2 is a factor. Dividing 42 by 2, we can say that 2 times 21 equals 42. Then we look for factors of 21. If we add the digits, we can see that 2 plus 1 is 3. So 3 is a factor, and 3 times 7 is 21. Therefore, 2 times 3 times 7 is 42. And then it's easy. We can say 2 times 3 times 7 is 42, and you get there. Well done if you got that or any other ways.
Let's just have one last game. The numbers for you to use will be two, three, four, six, and nine. And I'll choose the target, one of my favorite numbers, 72. Find as many solutions as you can to this little problem while I draw a terrible drawing of a Christmas tree with a narwhal. If you found one way, think of another. Try to find those factors. Come on, Mr. Narwhal. Oh, yeah, look at that horn. And some bubbles. A little bit of tinsel. Oh, you think. And done. Did you find the answer? Well, let's look at the factors of 72. It's even, so we know 2 is a factor. 72 is 2 times 36. 36, also even, 2 times 18. 2 times 2 times 18, 72. 18, there's another 2, just for good measure. 2 times 2 times 2 times 9, 72. 9 is that prime? No, it isn't, it's in the 3 times table, so we know the prime factorisation of 72 is this. But how does that help us with this puzzle? Well, we've got a 2 here, use this 2. We have a 3 here, use this 3. We can say 2 times 2 is 4. And lastly, one more 3, what have we got left? 9 and a 6. Let's say 9 minus 6 is 3, and that's one way to give us 72. There were lots of other ways, so well done if you got that or any other answer. Remember, there are numbers everywhere, and the more you train your brain, the more athletic you will be. So the next time you see a number, try to work out what its factors are. Challenge your parents or siblings to one of these games and see who can make the most solutions. Good luck and happy factorising and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your breakfast and a lovely Christmas.